Hi, my name's Michelle. Hi, my name's Amber. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm Tom. My name is Tom Kaiser and this is my wife Amy and welcome Hi. to the Dirt Road Home. What is the Dirt Road Home? This is a new YouTube channel that we're starting to uh, help you and help ourselves to avoid life's ditches. And we'll do another video that'll explain a little bit more about that. But um, in this series specifically, we are going to be doing a daily Bible study. See, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we have something called a Sabbath School Quarterly, just like many churches have their own Bible studies and their lesson plans. And this is a daily devotional that we're going to be doing, my wife and I, and we're going to have them posted each morning on our YouTube channel, and then we'll have links in our church's Facebook pages. And the, this Sabbath School Quarterly is how to interpret Scripture. When we read the Bible, we have to interpret it. It was written over 2,000 years ago, but the principles in God's Word are applicable today. And this week's topic is the uniqueness of the Bible. And uh, we've got a little illustration for you that we want to show you about how, um, how unique the Bible is. There's nothing like when I get home from a day's work to just sit down and relax in my favorite recliner. And I also like to have a little pillow behind me. Pillows are really interesting things. They, they're very unique. They have their own, their own thing. But multiple pillows. In fact, we have three or four of these same pillows here. Now, we've got another pillow that's a little bit more interesting. It's got a little bit more design on it. It's a little bit harder. It doesn't work quite so well on the, on the neck so much. But it's pretty. But we have multiple ones of these in the house, too. Now, this pillow here uh, is a little bit more unique in our house. The only one we have in our house is my Star Wars pillow, and it's nice and fuzzy. This one works really, really well as far as, as being able to lean back. But this last pillow here is special. This is a pillow that my Meemaw made me um, shortly after my, my papa died. And it was made using one of his shirts. Um, you can even see here it's got a, a little safety pin on it. And she wrote a special note on here for me. This is a shirt I used to wear. Whenever you hold it, you'll know I'm here. Love, Papa. And this, uh, this pillow has a special place in my heart. Um, because it reminds me of my papa. My papa's been gone now for just over five years and I still have this. And this is the only one just like this. There could be another shirt, another pillow made out of a shirt. There can be another pillow made as a memory, but this is the only one that's unique. And this week in our Sabbath School Quarterly, we're going to be talking about a truly unique book. And that's the Bible. The Bible is not like any other book, and that's what we're going to be discussing uh, today. So hang tight as uh, Amy and I talk about this wonderful and unique book called the Bible. Thank you for that illustration. Um, we have the pillar right here, right there, and it was really sweet of your Mimo to make you that. And uh, we're going to, I'm going to read the section from the Sabbath afternoon for this week's study. But before that, we're going to have uh, Amber and Michelle say the memory verse for you. This week's memory verse is, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalms 119-105. All right, before we continue reading today's uh, lesson, I think uh, we need to start with a prayer because it's always good to ask the Lord's help and seek the Holy Spirit as we read the Bible. So can you say a prayer? Tom? Sure. <clears throat> Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you for this day and for your goodness and your kindness. And I pray at this time as we study your word that you will reveal yourself through, through your Bible, Lord, and that those that are watching this now um, will be blessed. I want to pray a special prayer of blessing over um, the person right now that's watching this video, that you'll bless them in their lives. You know what they're going through and what they need, and I pray that you'll be the comforter to them. And Lord, I pray that you'll guide our study, that it will be uplifting to all those who partake in it. And may we be touched and forever changed into your likeness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Uniqueness of the Bible. Composed of 66 books and written over 1,500 years on three continents of Asia, Africa, and Europe by more than 40 authors, the Bible is unique. 
There is no other book, sacred or religious, like it. And no wonder, after all, it is the Word of God. There are more than 24,600 extant New Testament manuscripts from the first four centuries after Christ. Of Plato's original manuscripts, there are seven, Herodotus eight, and Homer's Iliad, slightly more with uh, 263 surviving copies. Wow. Hence, we have powerful confirming evidence of the integrity of the New Testament text. The Bible was the first book known to be translated, the mm. first book in the West published on the printing press, and the first book to be so widely distributed in so many languages that it can be read by 95% of the Earth's population today. And um, I want to pause here and share a little bit about this book right here that I have with me. This is a um, Bible translation in my language, my native tongue, which is Garo. I'm from India, and in India we have um, hundreds of different languages and dialects that are spoken by people all over the country with different groups of people. And Garo is a language that's spoken by a um, small group of people in the uh, northeastern part of India. And, and we have the Garo Bible right here. It says Rongtalgapa Sastro, which means the Holy Bible. It's, it's really cool. This Bible specifically has a little bit more meaning for us. Um, when we first got married, we got married in India, in her native uh, village of Bajing Doba. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was trying to learn the language, I was there, I wanted to learn the language. I was there for about two, two and a half months, and I wanted to spend some time learning the language. And so every night, I would get the Bible out, and with my wife sitting next to me, my brand new bride, we would, uh, I would read the Bible, in, reading in John, not really understanding what I was reading, but I understood enough because I had read that and she had taught me, you know, soul was the word for God and various different... Esau, yeah. Esau. okay. See, I'm even <laughs> forgetting that now. <laughs> and so it was, it was very powerful to be able to read it in another language, even though I didn't really understand what was being said. But it did help me in singing some of the hymns at church when we were there. Um, and it was, it was just a lot of fun. It's really cool that a people group as small as, as her people um, still be able to have the Bible in their own language. Yes. Yeah, and there are so many different um, languages that it's been translated into. So um, I'm going to continue reading the last paragraph here. The Bible also is unique in its content and message, which focuses on God's redemptive acts in history. That history is intertwined with prophecy as it foretells the future of God's plans and His eternal kingdom. It is the living Word of God because the same Spirit of God through which Scripture was inspired, which we, can, we will be reading in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 in a little bit. The same Spirit which scripture was, through which Scripture was inspired is promised to believers today to guide us into all truth as we study the Word. We'll be looking at some of the Bible verses that we have here. The first one she mentioned was in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And this is, this is one of my favorite texts. It says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Another tr other translation put it's God-breathed. Um, it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. It's given by what? The inspiration of God, or spoken by His very words. And it says it's profitable for doctrine, which doctrine is a, um, a theological word for teaching. Or it's a word that means something that we understand in Scripture. Like salvation but through Jesus Christ is a doctrine, is a teaching from the Bible. So it's good for uh, the teachings. It's good for reproof. What is reproof, Miss Teacher? <laughs> well, you have to reproof to your kids sometimes, your students, or even ourselves, we need re reproof. Yeah. Because we need to be corrected when we do something we are not supposed to be doing, or we have um, and that, misunderstandings. And, and that's the very next word. It says for correction, to correct people. Now, some people will take this and they will use the Bible to whack somebody upside the head with it. Now, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. 
We're supposed to do this in love. And every time Jesus corrected people in Scripture, there was always, you can almost hear the tears in his voice as he has to correct somebody, or the anger in his voice when he's correcting the Pharisees and their mistreatment of God's word and God's people. Uh, it says it's also good for the instruction of righteousness that the man or woman of God may be complete or perfected the whole, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So when we're called to minister, it's not in our own power. It's through God's word that gives us the power to be able to do the various good things that we do. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Let's uh, continue about um, God promising us the truth, the spirit of God. Uh, we're going to read uh, in John 14, 16, and 17. John 14. John 14 is um, one of my favorite chapters. In fact, it was one of the first verses I memorized. It's one of the first verses my daughter memorized. Um, when she was four years old, she learned um, John 14, 1 to 3, and still to this day can say it. This is a little bit after that promise uh, of God that uh, we don't need to be troubled. Um, 14, 16, and 17. 16 and 17. I just blanked out that happens <laughs> and i will pray the father and that he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him and he dwells with you and will be in you that's that's a promise and it's comforting to to have that promise from God, to know that we, we will have the Spirit of God helping us as we study God's Word and seek to understand what's in there. Because sometimes if we just try to do it on our own, it can be overwhelming. There are so many things there that, um, you know, it's like, are, is this what it actually means? Yeah. Or is it just my own interpretation? But some, but we ask this. That's why we pray before we read the yeah. Word of God, and God gives us understanding. The the Spirit gives us understanding. And there's different ways the Spirit can give us understanding. I know when I first started studying the Bible, uh, God used my wife to help me to learn things and correct me gently. My wife was very gentle in her corrections, and most very of the time, very gentle. She was very, she wouldn't even tell me, it's like, you're wrong. That's not what the Bible says. She'd be like, well, have you considered this passage? And I'd go back and I'd read this passage and, and then she, and then I'd come back and I'm like, well, what about this? And she was like, well, yeah, that I understand. But the Bible also says this and never came through and sit there and said, whack, you're wrong. Whack, you're wrong. And if she would have, my thick skull would have been like, nope, I'm done with this Bible thing. But she was able to use that spiritness of gentleness and meekness to be able to help teach me and God used that and I like the way that it says the word helper here and we think of a helper we think of somebody who either works for us or we think of our children or maybe we think of our spouse who helps us in a lot of things but this is more than just a helper this is God giving us enlightenment to understand his word mm -hmm. so we can understand not only what he meant but how we can apply it to our lives to live a, health, a healthier and happier life mm-hmm yeah, and we have the last verse here, John uh, 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. However, he, the spirit of truth, has come, and he will guide you into all truth. For he has not spoken of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he, sp he will speak, and he will tell you the things to come. It says he will guide you. How nice is that? Mm-hmm. Now I got a question for you, mm -hmm. Amy. Mm -hmm. If I study the Bible and you study the Bible, the same passage, and we both ask for His Spirit, Spirit. to guide us, mm -hmm. can we come to different conclusions? Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of people that have different understandings of the Bible because they would they study the Bible. They, we study the same passage, the same chapter and verse, and and I'm sure they would every. If we are studying correctly, we are all asking the Spirit of God to understand. But then we come up with uh, different understandings. Well, that's what this whole Sabbath School Quarterly is about, right? Mm -hmm. Proper Bible study methods with God's Spirit. Uh, one of my friends, Nicole Parker, um, saw her post on Facebook in the midst of some disagreements 
Maybe God allows us to come to the differences of opinion so we can learn how to treat each other properly. Now, there's only one truth. There's only one truth, but maybe God lets us to come to these different opinions. One of my favorite books um, is Steps to Christ. It is a, a beautiful book on how to walk with God. And in that book, um, the author says in, in chapter 7 or 8, I believe, that salvation will be made as clear as noonday. And talking about how to study the Bible, that salvation will be made as clear as noonday. It's a beautiful day outside, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. And you Love can it. see everything very, very vividly. The colors of the flowers and the trees in the front yard. Beautiful the, spring. The spring, spring. We, I can look out there and see some beautiful colors of a, of a barn a half mile down the road and the grass waving. And I can see these things clearly because of, because of the sun, sun there. But in the middle of the night, it's hard to see. But salvation, the things necessary for salvation in God's word will never be confused. Mm -hmm. And that is that we have to have a personal, individual relationship with Jesus. Yes. He will give us the understanding that we need to when we seek Him with uh, sincere with sincere hearts. Um, there might be things that you will get different person, different people will get different things out of the same verse according to your own needs. Mm -hmm. I, I want to close with a story here. A friend of mine told me once that he was listening to the sermon, and the sermon he's like, "Man, that was a terrible, terrible sermon." And after the sermon, he was kind of walking away. He was at this big meeting, and he was kind of disappointed. He's like, man, I got nothing out of that. And one of his members came up to him just about crying. And he says, friend, why, why are you crying? It's like, I've never understood Jesus so clearly as I have from when he was speaking. And my friend sat there and thought, man. And he kind of got two things out of it. First of all, is God can speak to anybody and speak to people in the audience differently. So even if you think the sermon's not so good, God can still use the not so good. But then also it was one of his church members and he had never explained Jesus in a way that he could understand it. But this preacher that he thought was a bad preacher was able to. And so God can speak to each one of us in different ways. There may be something from this very video that, that you yourself need. And your friend will watch this video and you share it with them and they'll get something completely different out of it or maybe not get anything at all out of it. And I think that's, that's the marvelous thing about God's Spirit is He gives us what we need when we need it. He'll be the helper the way that you need it, me, the way that I need it, <laughs> the way that you need it. And God's Spirit will always abide. Amen. Amen. So I'm thankful that God gave us the Bible. And, I'm, and like our memory text says, it's the word, uh, his word, is the lamb to our feet and a light to our path. And during these times when we're in the midst of um, despair for some people, and um, I think it's even more important that we study God's word, absolutely, just, just so that we can see the light and He can guide us and direct our paths. So. And I'm very, very thankful to God that we have the Bible, and not just the Bible, we have the Holy Spirit to guide us so we can understand the Bible better. Absolutely, absolutely. If you like this, make sure you, 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 you click the, the like button, the subscribe to the channel, so you can get more content like this. We're going to be putting out videos like this every single day, uh, at least to our best to, every single day, um, to help you and to help us be more intentional in our study of God. Thank you for watching The Dirt Road Home. I'm Tom. I'm Amy. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye.